also my marijuana card I got it for depression uh, I didn't really explain much about it you anyone can do it you you if you want in California in Los Angeles it's in Los Angeles Los Angeles County like someone was leaving comments saying that Michelle was leaving comments saying that it doesn't exist in Los Angeles County but it does you can look it up online and uh, stress and depression is enough legally to have a doctor say that a doctor give you a uh, recommendation and then you have to get an actual diagnosis from a doctor but it can be many different kinds of doctors it can be a medical doctor I think it has to be a medical doctor but it can be like a homeopathic doctor um, and I think that's a good way to handle medical marijuana I don't th I don't I think everybody should have access to it if they want and no one should go to jail for it you know use it in your home and don't sell it and it's there it is the government is satisfied I, uh, I I'm not you know I did it because I don't want to be bothered I don't want to get into trouble for it but I don't want to stop not that I'm gonna go crazy with it I, I'm gonna find balance with it but I don't want to get into trouble with for it there's no trouble it's it's illegal I think that the, what we do with law is that we we make laws so that humanity can become while following the law can become balanced enough to change the law and continue the process and then become balanced enough to change the law and balanced enough to change the law and it's a constant evolution and our laws today are much more balanced than they were a thousand years ago and they will be more balanced in a hundred years than they are now and I think medical marijuana is a very balanced law I think that to have drug offenders people for using drugs thrown in prison I find that to be very excessive on a similar note prison I want to put webcams in prison in the prison system I think that when someone commits a violent act that they should be they should be put in a holding cell that is fine prison is interesting in that way but they shouldn't be isolated being alone is okay because the body is going wild the body is violent the body knows violence so if you leave the body out in society it will do violence again and there that is why prisons are built but you put an inmate in a prison cell with web technology or give them a room where they can go to communicate on web technology all of a sudden with video technology they're not isolated they're they're held in a pen so they can't be violent but they can communicate and they will learn and they can become healthy people thoughtful people they're not unhealthy people that's this misconception about people in prison that they're awful people they're just people that have been neglected by society or people that have neglected themselves and have become isolated I'm telling you man this video technology is changing everything I am no longer I don't have to have money and I have five two thousand subscribers five thousand subscribers on that other account and I have nothing I am just a person with ideas people in prison can communicate with pastors or their wives or their husbands or their children or anyone anyone we can communicate. Prisons, homeless shelters, and schooling systems, this technology will be integrated into. And criminalization will fade. Homelessness will fade. And people will understand each other better. We're not putting people in prisons until, so that they rot and die. We're putting them in prison so that they can have an experience where they can learn and understand themselves better and not commit another crime. We are balancing the laws, and technology is evolution, an aspect of evolution. We use the. T I think this is a magical evolution. Watching ourselves, it's an odd experience. I was thinking about critical thought mass and how this relativity uh, relates to critical thought mass, but it's not really. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explore this idea more, that when we slow ourselves down, things around us happen faster. I know, like, I'll, I'll be thinking about someone. I'll be thinking, like, I know someone, like, I knew Rebecca was going to call me, and I was thinking about her and thinking, like, when will she call? Uh, when is she going to call? And then I thought, I, I, like, focusing on it is, is makes things not happen, you know? You, it's like running around in circles and people just, like, getting uncomfortable. But when I slow down, I let go of the thought, and I my mind blanked and she called and it's been happening often I find when I'm when I'm comfortable I think of something and then let the thought go and, and it manifests around me in some way I was in the shower thinking about Amanda D'Angelo 
the old girl I was dating, Amanda, and it, she called. First time in like a month and a half that I, she called while I was in the shower as I was thinking. And, I mean, it's it's everywhere. It's constant. My God, it's constant. It never stops. <sighs> this is very heavy. These thoughts are kind of heavy. I'm going to explore this more because I uh, I find Einstein's relativity incredibly interesting. He's onto something. He he knows that there is a unifying theory. He knows that there is a unifier. He just didn't have the technology to explain it at the time. His mind wasn't developed enough at the time. He was not evolved enough. He hadn't had Einstein's before him explaining it leading up to that point, so he had to do the work in the front. He stepped forward when no one else had and said, I believe in string theory. I believe that there is a unifier. And other people looked at him like he was crazy. Other people in the, in the physics world looked at him like he was crazy. But he just kept going. And his body died, but his thoughts live on in us.